it is, let's see, how can I put this? A truly great pleasure for me, and I don't use the word great very often, you know that, but nevertheless, it is a pleasure for me to be able to introduce a friend of Carol Wood Toastmasters, a person who has achieved much in Toastmastering. He comes from our district to the east, District 48, and he is an extraordinary speaker who not only won the International Speech Contest at his uh, district, he appeared in the semifinal rounds of the International Speech Contest a few years ago. I still remember that <laughs> that package, the cigarette box that you came on with. It was such a good speech. And tonight, we have the pleasure of hearing Mark once again. The title of his speech is this, Don't Prepare, Just Show Up. Don't prepare, just show up. Please welcome Mark Guy. If I understood you, would I have this look on my face? This is a title from a book by Mr. Alan Alda. How many people know Mr. Alan Alda by the show of hands? He is a famous American comedian and a TV star. Probably you know some of his work from his famous show called MASH. He is in his late mid-70s. And he made it his mission to make sure that every time there is a communication exchange or energy or meaning exchange between two people when it really counts, he wants to empower communicators with clarity. So Mr. Alan Alda wrote this book. If I understood you, would I have this look on my face? It is a funny book. It is an amazing book, and I recommend everyone check it out. In it, he talks about his work where he opened up a communication center in New York State. And he does special custom training for engineers, scientists, and everyone who is brilliant luminary but has difficulty expressing their ideas to somebody who is not in that field. So he takes them into his labs, into his classrooms, and he does the most amazing thing. He helps them become better communicators of value using improv. How many of you here have ever taken an improv class in your life by the show of hands or seen one on TV or would like to have one or would like to take one in, in your real life? Well, let me introduce this idea. Improv is like a Tai Chi for the soul and CrossFit for the speaker's brain. If you take an improv lesson today, or better yet, start your own group, improv group tonight <laughs> with your significant other, with your pets, or with somebody on Zoom. I have tried it all. And become a better communicator. Some of you know part of my journey. I am a Siberian storyteller from Florida, but I didn't get this way about a quarter of a century ago, came to the United States, was afraid of my own shadow, unable to speak up because I felt the heaviness of judgment from others in my own brain that I would be judged based on my accent or inability to speak. It was a long wind, winding road to where I am today. And as my dear friend John Morris have said, in 2015, I was able, I was blessed enough to participate in the international speech contest. And my heart broke in a million pieces when I didn't get the final trophy. On a flight back from Las Vegas to Orlando, I was thinking, what could I do better? How can I become a speaker of value, not just a wooden performer on stage? And I realized there is one way I can take improv classes. So I found the improv class in Orlando 
So I remember this going to Orlando for hour and a half for one hour of comedy class in improv and then driving right back. It was one of the best times of my life. I learned how to get outside of my own brain and connect with people and myself, not to be perfect, but to be present. Recently, I have started teaching improv classes in person and online in Lakeland, where I live. And at first, I didn't really know how many people would show up or how much interest there is. Now, this is my 12th class. I have people who are homemakers, students, professionals, CEOs, doctors, engineers, entrepreneurs taking this class and doing great things after they graduate. There's four rules. Well, they're made up rules that I have made in my class. Number one, when you have activities or scenarios or exercises with your other students in the class, we wanna make sure that we make them feel sensationally smart and super great because they're working with you. Number two, no matter what they say or what they do, we will accept this offer and begin everything, in the, especially in the first class with yes and. Third rule is we think, but we don't overthink. And finally, have as much fun as legally possible in a public place without getting arrested. So that is the four rules that I have made up and it has made me a better person, especially my improv rules come in handy when I'm driving on Interstate 4. Please, sir, you seem to be in a hurry. Please go ahead in front of me. Please, ma'am, looks like you are showing me some gestures through your window. I understand you want to play, so I keep going. My improv <laughs> class doesn't just end in the class. It extends into every part of my life. So I would like to invite you to explore, to take improv classes on your own, in your life. Find a class near you, or better yet, have the courage to start your own. Okay, I am ready to evaluate Mark's speech, and he is coming all the way over from District 84, and uh, although he certainly has found a home here at District 48. I liked the title of his speech, Don't Prepare, Just Show Up. And I started to evaluate using a generic speaker evaluation form, which I posted on the share my screen, just so you could see one of the approaches that you can use to prepare to evaluate a speech that maybe isn't exactly a pathways template. So what did he do very, very well? His approach is he's conversational. I love his smile. Mark began with a smile. Now, there's some question oftentimes, should we sit down to deliver a speech or should we stand up? And I know that the sandwich man, Bob Terrell, likes to recommend we, we stand up. And yet people who deliver remotely, such as our TV cable news people, say the only person who stands up is the weather person. So I thought that Mark sitting down worked really, really well. I liked his background. His gestures were not too close to the camera. And sometimes with Zoom, uh, they tend to be that way. So some of the other comments about his voice, how his, I heard his material and my reactions, I'll just share in some general comments. I like the fact that he asked the audience how many people know Alan Alda. And as somebody who's 74 years old, my first reaction would be, huh, why do you have to ask people about Alan Alda? And yet MASH probably went off the screen about 20 years ago. So that's a really good point to include everyone in his audience. And I also shared with everyone on the, uh, the member list, Alan Alda's book, which was written in 2017. If I understand stood you, would I have this look on my face? And that shows that Mark, his blueprint is always to think outside of the box, always to look for additional feedback. And I think that I'm going to put that book on my to read list. He talked about his labs being his classroom. And I loved some of his comments, such as Tai Chi for the soul and Siberian storyteller from Florida. One of the uh, people who does uh, 
the uh, improv in our area is, is Toby Martini, if you want to check him up. And what could he do better? Mark is often asking that about his own individual speeches and about how he shares with others. And so just two comments that I would share is he talked about he's had 12 classes in improv. Make sure you give us the link after the meeting. But why do people that take that class, why do they do it? Why do they take it? Maybe even a story or two, since he was only six minutes and seven seconds, he had at least another minute. And then finally, how did improv make you a better speaker? I thought that was interesting and wasn't totally there for me, and maybe I just missed it a little bit. But he talked about improv and getting involved with improv, partly because he wants to be an even more dynamic speaker. It's wonderful to have Mark all the way over here at the Youngest and Funnest Club in Carrollwood, and he didn't even have to wear shoes. Thank you so much for your speech this evening.